Hi, I'm Dr. Ashwin Anantakrishnan from the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. I'd like to present the findings of my study looking at pre-diagnosis vitamin D status and the risk of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are immune-mediated diseases that have been increasing in incidence worldwide over the past few decades. Though we understand a lot about the genetics of these conditions, we understand far less about environmental influences that can affect the development of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. There's some laboratory data that supports a role for vitamin D in the pathogenesis of these conditions. If you look at animal models, mice that are deficient in vitamin D seem to be more susceptible to the development of colitis. And in mice that develop colitis this way, administration of vitamin D seems to help ameliorate their symptoms. So there is some laboratory and basic science data that supports a role for vitamin D in the pathogenesis of these diseases. But there's very little human data that examines if vitamin D has a similar role in humans. So the aim of our study was to examine if pre-diagnosis vitamin D, that is an individual's vitamin D status before they develop Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, influences their likelihood of developing a new diagnosis of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. To examine this question, we used a large cohort called the Nurses Health Study, which is a cohort of women who were enrolled in 1976 and followed with biennial questionnaires every two years with an excellent follow-up rate of over 90%. Our study began in 1986, where we excluded patients who developed Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis prior to this diagnosis. We assessed an individual's vitamin D status in 1986 using a validated questionnaire. We know that there are several factors that influence an individual's vitamin D status, including race, geography of residence, body mass index, physical activity, dietary, and vitamin D supplemental intake. Using all these factors, previous researchers had developed a score that can predict an individual's plasma vitamin D status, and this score has been previously validated. We applied the same score that had been developed within these nurses' health study cohorts to calculate an individual's vitamin D status in 1986. These women were subsequently followed for up to 22 years till our study endpoint of 2008, we examined how many of them developed a new diagnosis of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Overall, about 72,000 women were included in our study, contributing to about 1.5 million person years of follow-up. Over the 22-year follow-up, there were 122 new cases of Crohn's disease and 123 cases of ulcerative colitis, which is comparable to the incidence rates reported from other cohorts in the literature. The median predicted vitamin D status in this cohort was about 27. We divided the vitamin D status into quartiles based on their level of predicted vitamin D. The lowest quartile for vitamin D had a predicted vitamin D level of about 22, whereas the highest quartile had a predicted vitamin D of 32. We then compared the incidence of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis across these different quartiles. What we found was that compared to women who had the lowest predicted vitamin D quartile, women in the highest predicted vitamin D quartile, that is the best vitamin D status, had a 45% reduction in their risk of developing Crohn's disease. Alternatively stated, the hazard ratio for quartile 4 compared to quartile 1 was 0.55, with this meeting statistical significance. We saw a similar 35% reduction in the risk of developing ulcerative colitis, and though this demonstrated a statistical trend, this did not quite meet statistical significance, but was certainly suggestive. We then also examined this as a continuous variable where we looked at an individual's predicted vitamin D status and saw that for every 1 nanogram per ml increase in predicted vitamin D, there was a 7% reduction in risk of Crohn's disease and a smaller reduction in risk of ulcerative colitis. We then examine if this could potentially be explained by dietary and supplemental vitamin D intake. And similar to our overall predicted vitamin D status, we divided our dietary vitamin D status into quartiles and examined the risk for the highest compared to the lowest quartile. Similar to our findings for the overall predicted vitamin D status, we found that for women who consumed the highest quantity of vitamin D, they had a reduction in their risk of ulcerative colitis, 
with about a 10% reduction in their risk for every 100 international units per day intake. We saw a smaller reduction in risk for Crohn's disease with about a 6% reduction for every 100 international units per day intake. In summary, what our study found was in this large cohort of about 72,000 women who were followed for up to 22 years, there was a 45% reduction in their risk of Crohn's disease based on their pre-diagnosis vitamin D status and a suggestion towards a similar reduction in risk for ulcerative colitis that did not meet statistical significance. This certainly provides very interesting findings that could potentially explain an important role for vitamin D in the development of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. These findings need to be taken in conjunction with some other studies in the area that have tied in vitamin D status potentially to severity of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and have also used vitamin D to try to prevent relapses of these chronic lifelong illnesses. And taken together, these findings suggest that there is a strong need for further studies that both try to understand from a mechanistic standpoint how vitamin D could potentially influence Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, but how we can also translate this knowledge potentially into therapies that help in the management of these conditions. I thank you for your attention.